Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week we've got steering in Zwift, shoes that can make you faster, a new GPS computer and some cool 3D printed Formula One parts, as well as our main talking point, which is the lightest bike so you can buy right now. Very nice. Yeah, also, we've got my cunning plan as well. Oh yeah? What about that? You have to wait and see. We'll begin with the poll from last week, which was uh, your favourite piece of cycling tech from the 80s. Um, an overwhelming victory here. Very overwhelming. The clipless pedal. Um, 79%. Yeah, everything else just paled into insignificance. Well, I'm actually really surprised because I thought the um, our record bike would have been a lot higher up. Yeah, yeah, well, carbon bikes, like the look KG86. But anyway, yeah, clipless pedals. That's, yeah. that's clear, clear cut clear that. Winner. Um, on to this week's main talking point. Yeah, well, we're looking at the lightest production frames available. Yes. Pretty now, interesting. myself and Alex, well, seeing as we always seem to bang on about our love for all things aero, we've decided to talk about light stuff because, I mean, we still love lightweight. I mean, every cyclist loves lightweight frames yeah. and they're blooming amazing. So we're going to look at the lightest frames that you can get right now. Yeah, but before we dive into this, I do want to re-clarify something because a few months ago, on my first ever GCN Tech Show, when you asked me aero or lightweight, I kind of panicked a little bit and did choose lightweight in error. In error? Uh, always lightweight. There's no, that's not even a question. I have to rethink this, uh, this higher. It just kind of amazed me how many people picked up on this, and you've noticed it in the comments as well, haven't you? Yeah, well, I mean, I did threaten to uh, remove your status as a GCN presenter unless you changed your answer. Anyway, we demand the lightest bikes available to humanity, and we want them now. Yeah, that's right. But when searching for super light bikes, carbon is the go-to material because it's almost impossible to replicate its weight and strength properties with other materials that are available right now. Yes, and in terms of the frames we're focusing on, we're focusing mainly on the frame and, and not the whole bike because that's the core of the bike. The rest of the components they're kind of like interchangeable, and so in terms of making the lightest bike possible, you'd have to start with the lightest frame. Yeah. We will look at the components as well on, on some of the bikes we talk about because a lot of them are sold as complete bikes. Um, but yeah, we're mainly interested in the frame. And something else worth mentioning is probably the weight limits. Yeah, that's true. Because in the past, super light, mega exotic carbon bikes, they often came with weight limits of like, I don't know, 80 kilos, which is yeah. pretty low. As I was saying, I've I would have been over the weight limit of some of these super light bikes a few years back, but now it's not really such an issue, is it? Yeah, a lot of them are very, very usable and have weight limits as, you know, we see things like 120 kilos, which is pretty much the same as what you'd get on a standard carbon road bike. Okay, and first up, we've got the giant TCR Advanced SL0. Yeah, Ooh. proper light this. Very we nice. were lucky enough to get our hands on one. I was lucky enough to ride it across Wales in a day and out the box, I just couldn't believe how light it was. So it was 6.6 .6 kilograms in a size medium large, my size, um, which included, well, 40 millimeter wheels and a power meter. Very light that is, it's yeah. impressive, isn't it? Yeah, and they've achieved this in a number of ways. So the, the frame has a, what's called thin line paint technology, which saves a load of weight over a traditional paint job on the frame. And they also, the way they've constructed the frame, so they basically use robots and lasers. Now, lasers to cut out the individual swatches of carbon more accurately than a human, saves weight. And also, the um, robots to lay up those individual swatches of carbon, which is more accurate than a human, and also saves weight. Additional, interesting laser fact, oh. cutting the carbon out with lasers also reduces the waste of carbon fiber material, which means they can make more bikes with the same amount of carbon. Yeah, and also lasers are just really cool. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so to put into context, the total frame set weight with all the hardware in is apparently, well, according to Giant, 1,266 grams, 1.266 kilograms. Um, and, and that can be compared to, say, an S-Works Tarmac, Right, which is a really light bike. Very light bike. That's said to be 1,371. So, I mean, you know. That really is super light. impressive. And we have seen claimed figures for this frame alone of 765 grams, which is super light, isn't yeah. it? Very, very light. And next up, we've got the Canyon Ultimate CFR. And this is the Ultimate that we all know, but it's got a fancy carbon layup 
and uses Japanese military grade carbon fiber, weighing in at 641 grams for a size medium, which is absolutely mental. Yeah, it is incredible. I'm very lucky to actually have one of these bikes at the moment. And I've made a video about it and put it up on the channel. So if you want to see more, you can check it out. But I think what really puts it in perspective for me is if we take the, the Cervelo RCA, which was brought out in limited numbers in 2012, and at the time was a project in trying to create the absolute pinnacle of, of, of carbon fiber bike. Uh, technology and, and make it as light as possible. That was 667 grams yeah. for a size 54 centimeter frame. This is lighter, it's a bigger size, and it's rim brake. Yeah, that's impressive, and it really just highlights. Well, well, that the Cervelo was rim brake. This is disc brake. Yeah, yeah. But that, as I said, that's impressive. Yeah. But it does really highlight the advancements in the technology and how impressive this crop of super lightweight bikes are. A little interesting fact for yeah. you as well. This Canyon Ultimate CFR, some areas of the frame are exactly the same thickness as a Coke can. And that's impressive, really. And it's incredibly strong still. It yeah. just blows my mind. Yeah, I wouldn't want to stand on it, though. No, perfect for riding on. <laughs> <laughs> Next on our list is the Specialized S-Works Athos. This, it, I mean, it's got to be the lightweight bike that most people will have heard of. Yeah, Build as the lightweight hyper bike for everyone, as long as your pockets were deep enough. Kind of took a a kind of more traditional approach to bike design, like out, you know, arrows out the window. We're yeah. back to external cables on a new bike, a threaded bottom bracket. Um, external seat clamp collar. Yes, yeah. and, and all in the sort of off the peg weight for the complete bike, and this is incredible, 5.9 kilograms. Yeah, it's very light. Partly that's down to the incredibly light 588 gram frame set, which specialized say they're able to get such a low weight by using hundreds of thousands of finite element analysis simulations using a supercomputer to optimize the carbon layout to have minimal leftover material. Yeah, well, I mean, it is an incredibly light, yeah. incredibly light machine. And well, if you want one, well, um, yours for about 11 grand. However, there are still bikes lighter than the specialized Athos that can still be commercially bought. Yes, it's called the Vial and it's from AX Lightness. It's very good, isn't it? And this is a rim brake frame, and it's coming in at a claimed weight of about 600 grams for a size small, going up to 685 grams if you use the size extra large, which is, again, pretty light, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's said to achieve this by being made in a high-end facility that also makes carbon fiber components for three separate Formula One teams. That Crazy, cool. but unlike every other bike we've spoken about so far, this is a rim brake bike. Yeah, that is, that is pretty impressive. And they've got this bike available with a very exotic, fancy build-up, but it's coming in around £15,000, which is crazy expensive, but you are getting a crazy light bike coming in at about 4.4 kilograms. Yeah. However, there is something even lighter than that if your pockets are deep enough. Yes, a Slovenian company called Burke, guessing the name's lost in translation, um, have produced an astonishing 3.9 kilogram road bike, right? Yeah. Fully functional road bike. This is something that uh, our friends over at Bike Radar reported on last year. This thing is absolutely insane, isn't it? And it uses every single exotic German carbon fiber part you could imagine. Yes, and then modifies a lot of them as well. So it's That's a rim brake bike. But uh, there's things such as the shifters, uh, they're SRAM red, mm -hmm. lightest groups, um, and they've been milled out and dremeled out to save yeah. weight. The things like the rear derailleurs and things have been modified with lighter bearings and such the like to just and lighter carbon cages to make them just as light as possible in every conceivable way. Yeah, no stone left unturned. At its core, though, is a 631 gram frame set with an integrated seat post and they use some impressive Torre carbon fibers, including some incredibly high spec ones, which are very similar to those used in Canyon's CFR range. Yes, and Burke uh, engineers have said that they reckon they could actually make a sub 500 gram frame set if, if they wanted, uh, with relative ease. However, at the moment they're focused on uh, making saddles instead. Yeah, that's, I don't know why you do that. Yeah. But, <laughs> but if, you, if you did want one of these crazy light bikes, unfortunately they have only made one. Yeah, it was but, a one-off. Yeah, but I'm sure 
If you contacted them and asked nicely enough, they could uh, rustle one up fairly quick. Yeah, if you've, if you've got deep enough pockets, uh, I think these are the guys to uh, to make your dream come true. Yeah, although um, I think if if the price isn't shown, like yeah. we were just saying, I think it's maybe because it's a little bit out of uh, yeah, range. Yeah, if, if you have to ask, you <laughs> can't afford it. <laughs> yeah. Tell you what though, four and a half kilograms. I was thinking of other things that are four and a half yeah. kilograms. Okay. Right. Toblerone. You can get a four and a half kilogram Toblerone for seventy three ninety nine. I mean, bargain. price per kilogram has outweighed the Burke bike by a lot. But absolute bargain. <laughs> anyway, let us know uh, in the poll uh, down below which which of these super bike, mega bikes you would have. If you could have any of them, which one would you have? We'll reveal answers next week. Right, and into hot tech this week. And uh, many of you have probably noticed that I've been kind of on a bit of a losing streak on, on GCN recently. I've been losing every race I've, I've sort of entered. Um, so I've come up with an idea for something that I can actually win. Oh yeah? Come on, let me know this. I'm intrigued to hear. Right, well, recently, all as presenters, we set up accounts in the GCN app, okay? Yeah. And Lloydie has been taking the mickey out of me, saying I'm going to get no followers and he's going to get way more followers than me. So, I've come up with a cunning plan. A plan so cunning, you could put a tail on it and call it a weasel. Go on then. I'm going to bribe the audience. What? Yeah, when I get to 500 followers, I'm going to pick one of you guys at random and then send you some GCN merch and a, a handwritten note from me. There's some, some pretty good odds there. And if you want to help Ollie avoid another embarrassing defeat, then head on to the GCN app and give him a follow because it's free to do so and you could win a prize, which is yeah. pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Although, if I'm honest, I'm not sure how that's going to help me win the competition too because currently I'm sat at zero followers, which is not so great, is it? Okay, well, um, also follow Alex. Just make sure you follow me first. And on some actual hot tech now, and Wahoo have just done an update for their Wahoo Kicker Bike, which has enabled steering, which is something that's been available on their bike before, but this firmware update has just enabled the users to make, well, use of it really. And they've got the little buttons inside the shifters that now allow you to steer left or right accordingly in game on Zwift as well. Yeah, it's a cool development this. It is and very it's cool. Definitely a sign of things to come. I, this is the way it's going to go. Yeah, I think so. I, um, um, I, I just makes me want to just ride down out the Zwift and cut all the hairpins like Lance Armstrong and just get the fastest time. You would definitely get the fastest time there. <laughs> but the update the Zwift have applied now enables you to steer across all of their worlds rather than just the one that was previously available. Next, we have new shoes from Specialized. After months of spotting these shoes on the feet of pro riders, at, various races. They've finally been unveiled as the new Specialized S-Works Aries and they've been designed and made in conjunction with pro riders like Sam Bennett. Yeah, they're pretty cool, aren't they? And they've got some bold claims with these shoes. Very bold claims. Very bold claims. They're claiming a power saving up to 7 watts, which is quite significant for a shoe, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, which could result in a 10 second, no, a 14 second saving, sorry, over a 10 kilometer time trial. Again, pretty impressive numbers to be claimed. And Specialized say these shoes are 1% better than any shoe they've ever made before. Well, uh, I mean, the, the, I've got the actual quote from Specialized here. They, they say that they're said to increase comfort and performance with a new patent pending closure architecture by triangulating retention across the midfoot and spreading the pressure out over a larger surface area. The S-Works Aries essentially eliminates roll within the shoe. Like foot roll within the shoe. Like rolled off the tongue as well, didn't it? Yeah. Pretty impressive though. They've got a claims weight of 220... Grams. 20 grams. What do you yeah, I wasn't sure it was 25. Kilograms. I didn't, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was 225. I didn't want to give them yeah. five grams away. Yeah. Um, and a claimed retail price of 370... Well, I mean, the retail price is, is the price. It's, it's the actual so, price, yeah, okay. It's claim. The retail price is £375. Yeah, pretty expensive. Yeah, but it's a pretty cool pair of shoes. Mm. Mm. They do look good. Next, we have the Hammerhead Karoo 2, and I'm pretty excited about this. It's if set its stall out as trying to be the best bike computer available in the world, and it's been available for pre-order for quite a while now, but it's finally due to start shipping in February, which is 
next week. And it's the, well, it's fair to say the much anticipated follow-up to the Hammerhead Karoo 1. Yeah, that's right. And the first generation unit was quite a big, cumbersome unit, whereas this second generation is much more compact, sort of similar to what you could, sort of size you'd expect on a Wahoo Element Roam, really. So it's yeah. quite smaller. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's crammed with loads and loads of tech, but I mean, the most notable standout bit of tech that you immediately see is the screen on it, which is like smartphone level good screen yeah. in terms of like, you know, the touch screen on it and the color and the resolution. Um, but it's also aiming to be like a really good navigation device as well. So we're actually gonna do a video uh, checking it out and doing like a navigation challenge on it just to, to see what it can do. Um, so stay tuned for that coming up on the channel soon. Right, and the final part of Hot Tech this week, and this is something that was brought to our attention earlier in the week, and it's a 3D printed brake pedal for a Formula One car, which is pretty cool looking at this thing. Um, and there's three reasons this caught my interest. Firstly, well, I just love Formula One. I don't know about you. Yes. Sorry. Ah, well, I love it anyway, and I love the technology behind it. Secondly, it got me wondering if this sort of 3D printed technology could be used for bike components. I know recently you checked out a 3D printed titanium frame. Beautiful. Yeah, which was very cool. But thirdly, and I've actually checked this with my top secret inside Formula One expert, and they have confirmed categorically there's absolutely no way this would ever be used for a Formula One brake pedal because this sort of 3D printed technology is only really used for prototyping parts and there's no way such a crucial part as a brake pedal would is be it, signed is off. Is it Lewis Hamilton? No. Oh. Sorry to get your hopes up. Um, I think, well, that's interesting. I think we need to do a 3D printing GCN Tech Show special and get some experts on. That would be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, we need to find out more about this and, and the science of it. Well, we better get our thinking caps on. More hot tech next week. It's now time for snacks of the week. Mm. We've got a bit of a homemade special this week. What is this? It is a banana, chocolate and pecan loaf handmade in my very own kitchen, not by me. But okay, by just Chloe. looking, first thing, just looking at the picture there, mm. there's a loaf. Where's the rest of it? Unfortunately, I have been working my way through it quite considerably over the last few days and there wasn't a vast amount left, so this was all I was allowed to bring in. <laughs> I can confirm it is very good though. Just be very careful how you rate this because if you're too critical of this, you can kiss goodbye to us ever getting any more cake. I mean, it looks it's very moist. Yeah, it's banana loaf. Mm. Mm. A little bit too moist. I think it might be slightly underbaked. Yeah? Mm. Mm. Okay. It tastes right though. It tastes very good. I can confirm it tastes the same most of the way through the loaf because I've been slowly edging my way through. Yeah, I can tell that, yeah. Mm. <laughs> but, yeah. um,. Anyway, keep your snacks of the week coming in, because it's always great to have them. Maybe something might take Ollie's appetite a little bit more next week. Yeah, and um, yeah, please send in your snacks and save us from Alex's dregs. <laughs> Cha-ching! It's now time for screw riding upgrades by upgrades. Where you submit evidence of the upgrades that you've made to your bike equipment or cycling lives for a chance to win the ultimate prize, a GCN water bottle. Like the one on my bike here. There That's brand new, that one. Um, yeah, now before we get on to this week's entries, last week's submissions, we had Jameson's Team USA Rally versus Matt's Pinarello Gan. And the winner, quite comprehensively, was Matt's Pinarello Gan. 63%. Yes, it was a beautiful bike there. Very, Very cool old. looking bike. Um, get in contact with Facebook, we'll get the, the bottle out to you. And first up this week, we have got Cookset. I just want to point out, we did include a video with his submission, which was very cool. I enjoyed yeah, watching awesome. that. Um, and having purchased their first new bike and been inspired by Manon's custom paintwork, they've decided to give their old Rally Airlight 200 a bit of TLC. We've got up-to-date gears, new cranks, bottom bracket, Ultegra bottom bracket, carbon seat post and handlebars. Um, I mean, the old bike looks really tired. Yeah, the old and, bike And does really, tired. like, dated as well with that old paint job. Um, but I'm, I mean, when you stripped all the paint off. And, yeah, taking I mean, it right back to the bare frame. Look at it now though. <laughs> I'm super amazing. impressed. That, that paint is job very, is very amazing. Impressive. Like, Trek charge 
like so much money for a paint job like that. This is like a, a Trek Project One. Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> and I, oh, what an amazing paint job you've done. Like that is, I'm blown away by that. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Mavic wheels look great as well. And just the new uh, Tiagra components on there and stuff. Oh, that is, that's fantastic. It's a job well done. It really is. Manon's custom paint video, by the way, if you've not seen it, it's excellent. Like, check it out. She did an incredible job. Yeah. Um, not gonna be playing sailing though, because uh, he's up against D Bats, um, who brought a, a bike for just 130 euros. Um, and it was just a you know basic hybrid bike, and they've updated it to a gravel bike, right? With compact drops and. He's also got a, a, a what he describes as a locally branded group set, which is something I've not heard of before, but it's <laughs> Sagmit Alliance 8-speed. Um, yeah. New, new to me. New to me as well. But there's the original bike, and then yeah. transformed. That looks really smart. I'm particularly liking the really neat um, sort of leather effect bar tape. And those yeah. tan sidewalls, they really do smarten it up and just tan sidewalls make any bike look cool well i know i did not any bike okay most bikes i think they look a lot of bikes look good they make all the bikes ollie likes look cool anyway that looks great i think that's uh, you've done a fantastic job of turning that into a drop bar gravel bike and yeah that's i'm intrigued bike. to see uh, how builds. these ones go yeah mm. and 130 euros for that base bike that was a, that was a bargain mm. it was you've done well um, but who wins, you'll decide. Um, just click down below and winning gets a bottle. Time now for our favorite part of the show, the oh, yeah. Bike Vault, where you submit pictures of your bikes into the GCN app and then we judge them to be either nice or, or super, super nice. nice. What happens if they're super nice, Alex? Well, we ring the bell and wonder what noise comes out this week. Ahoy, me hearty! And they're committed to the Bike Vault for eternity. You can play along at home on the GCN app, as all the bikes we feature uh, will be in there too, and you can vote on them if you disagree with what we judge to be nice and super nice. But without further ado, who have we got first this week? We have got, first up is Mio7F. Catchy name with their Standard. Standards RS second cut, 2020. And that's... A that's, that's a cool. Pretty smart looking machine, I have to say. I'm, um, I'm, I'm liking the paint job on it as well. The yeah. Sort of white, orange, and black. Um, I do like cool. that paint scheme. It's good. Big fan of those wheels as well. And nice uh, DT Swiss die cuts. Very nice. Um, I mean, that's the crank position, that's passable, I would say. We're not quite in Biggie Smalls, but. Right. I, Two tone I, chain. It, it's that, yeah, it's doing it for me though, that. I have to say, I. I that's doing it for me. So you you're gonna call it on a super nice even with a few emissions. A few infractions, but I think yeah. that yeah, I think that's a super nice. Okay, I really like the paint scheme, so yeah, I'll go with that. Mm. Super nice starts off. Uh, next we've got Isodino Noir 96. Good, yeah. Um, and this is Scott Addict. What do you make of that? Yeah, I like this bike. Black, stealthy. The paint scheme looks a little bit dated on this now. That's the, I remember the, the sort of CR1 in that paint mm. job. Um, and yeah, so that is that the class, that's what I think of when I think of Scott, I think of that classic mm. paint job like that. But it's not to say it's bad, because I do, I do like this. Those bikes were super light. That was like the original super light bike, that, that generation Scott Addict. They were, they were crazy light. Um, we got saddle angles a bit. Saddle angles. Very but, interesting. Yes. Um, but they've done a good job, I think. I mean, the tight the tire, Tires and valves not aligned. Wait Oops. a minute, there's a valve cap on the, the rear, rear one, but not, not the on front. the front. Yeah. Nice. Unfortunately, I don't think we can let that slide. It's no, just going to be a nice. Oh, God. Nice. Nice. On to the next one, um, which is... Pepito. Pepito nine. 294120. <laughs> yes. With their Decathlon Triban 500. I love the Triban 500. It's a fantastic bike, but that photo is there is, is there a giant mirror or is there two bikes? We just don't know. We just don't know. Um, I, I mean, yeah, you, it's underexposed. We can't see what's going on. It's it's non-drive side. It's a, a jaunty angle. That's a nice. Yeah. Um, what do you make of this one though? Canyon Ultimate CFR. It says here, um, author Ollie's phone. Interesting. So is this? Uh, personal submission you've slid in here? Might be. Well, 
Well, in that case, we better assess this critically and thoroughly. Well, it's super nice, obviously. No, 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 no. It can't be immediate super nice. What have we got here? Let me just assess this. So, Biggie Smalls, yeah, valves, valves, tires aligned. Um, no chimney. Water bowl has been left in though. It's a GCM water bowl. Yeah, okay. This is interesting saddle looks very high for you. Yeah, that's because <laughs> you'd been sat on it. You'd want oh, to try it out. Yeah, okay. You're still your saddle high. Wonder if you'd remember that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I know it's your bike, but I do really like this bike. It's 100% super nice for me. Oh, you nice. gonna call it super nice? Yeah, well, obviously I'm gonna. I think it's... I don't know. I'm not sure I can. I'm not sure I should be allowed to. Okay, well, I gave it super nice anyway. Oh, thanks. And um, what we've got next? Um, Slow Eddie has submitted his Burly Rumba, which is a tandem. Two for the price of one. Wow. That Interestingly, is, um, I was going to say... Is that a massive disc rotor on the rear? Yeah, ginormous disc rotor. That is enormous. I think I'm just, I want to give it super nice just for that rotor. <laughs> I was going to say it's presented non-drive side, but dual-sided drive this is. Yeah. <laughs> can't, uh, the can't the normal rules go out the window. I mean, no chimney. No. Um, I, I don't know. I've got... We don't get many tandems, and I've got a soft spot for tandems. And I, I just think that's super nice. I think yeah. tandems are just cool. Yeah, tandems are cool. Yeah. Next up, we have um, a pro a submission. Pro submission, yes. Robert Gessink has, has logged into the GCN app and submitted his um, Yumbo Visma team bike for 2021, his Cervelo S5. Um, and well, the public have voted on it and said it's super nice. But what do we judge of it? Well, it's. I mean, it's a bit of a jaunty angle. Yeah. Um, We've got to be fair mm. with this. We can't just be. We've got to stick to the rules here. Yeah. yeah. He's not put it in Biggie Smalls. No. Cranks are aligned. He has aligned. He has tried to align the cranks. Bless him. And bless he has. Him. And he has. Um, he has tried to align the, the wheels and tyres as well. Yeah. I mean, he's trying. There's a, the the thought is there. Yeah. He's trying. I think I, one bottle. The thing is, though, is we shot ourselves in the foot here because we could have gone. Oh no, he's left a bottle in. Nice. But jaunty angle. But I left a bottle in mine, mm. and we gave it super nice. But since I've been on this show, I've never ever known you let a bike slide through with super nice that's at a jaunty angle. I don't think it's happened. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point actually. Mm. Nice. Just a nice, unfortunately. Yeah, a nice. It doesn't matter who you are. We'll Sorry, judge Robert. it correctly. Just a nice. Mm, thank you. Unfortunately, that's it for this week's tech show. As always, hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah, if you have, please give us a thumbs up. Check out the GCN shop, shop.globalcyclingnetwork, if you want to get your hands on some merch. Alternatively, if you want the chance to get some amazing merch for free, you know what to do. <laughs> give me a follow in the GCN app. Help my cunning plan happen and beat Lloydy. And if you want to help me just with the kindness of your good heart, then subscribe to me too. But you don't get a prize for helping him. Yeah. Just saying.